verses 31 to 40 of chapter 6. Sarva bhuta stitam hyo maam bhajate katva mastita hak sarva thavarta manopi sayogi mahi vartate atma upam yena sarvatra samam pashyati yodjuna Sukham Bhaya Diva Dukham Sayogi Paramo Mataha Arjuna Uvacha Yoyam Yoga Svahya Proktaha Samye Namadhu Sudana Yetasyaham Napashyami Chanchalat Pastitim stiram Chanchalam himana Krishna Brahmati balabadridham Tasyaham nigraham manhe Vayo rivasu dushkaram Shri Bhagavanu vacha Asam Shayam Mahabaho Manodur Nigraham Chalam Abhyase Natu Kaunteya Vairagya Nachagrahyate Asam Yatatmana Yoga Dushprapahiti Mehmatihi Vaishyatmana tuhyatata Shakyo vaptu mupahyataha Arjuna uvacha Ayathe shraddha yopetaha Yoga chalita manasaha Aprapya yoga samsiddhim Kaam gatim krishna gachati Kachin mo bhaya vibhrashtaha Chin na bhrami vanashyati Apratishto mahabaho Vimudho brahmana pati Yetan me samshayam krishna Chetumahasya sheshataha Tvadhanya samshaya syasya Chetana hyupapadhyate Shri Bhagavanu vacha Patanai dehana mutra Vinashastasya vidhyate Nahi kalyana krit kashchit Durgatim tatha gachati
ಸಹನಾವತು ಸಹನೌ ಗುಣಕ್ತು ಸಹ ವೀರ್ಯಂಕರ ವಾವಹೈ ತೇಜಸ್ವಿನಾವರೀತಮಸ್ತು ಮಾವ್ಯಕ್ತಿಷಾವಹೈ ಓಂ ಶಾಂತಿ ಆತ್ಮೋಪ್ಯೋರ್ಜುನ ಸುಖಂ ಬಾಹ್ಯಖ ಸಿ ಪರಮೋ ಮತ ಆತ್ಮೋಪ್ಯೇನ ಸರ್ವತ್ರ ಸಶ್ಯತಿಜುನ ಸುಖಂ ಬಾಹ್ಯಖ ಸಿ ಪರಮೋ ಮತ He who, through the likeness of the self, O Arjuna, sees equality everywhere through joy and sorrow, he is considered a supreme yogi. He who, through the likeness of the self, O Arjuna, sees equality everywhere through joy and sorrow, he is considered a supreme yogi. the yogi is one who sees pleasure and pain alike he is a he is considered to be a, a yogi one who is affected by pain and pleasure one who is disturbed by pain and pleasure is the opposite of yogi so who is a yogi he is considered mataha is considered a supreme yogi equality everywhere through joy and sorrow he who through the likeness of the self if you have been following what he is saying from 29 to 32 he is talking about the test of spiritual unfoldment each and every verse was giving one one indicator of what is spiritual growth spiritual growth means vedantic knowledge that's what what is meant by spiritual growth here how mature how uh, how much you have understood this knowledge that's what is meant by spiritual growth so 29 he said sees the self in all beings and all beings in the self verse number 30 he said while functioning in the world he doesn't lose his focus upon the supreme self 31 said whatever be his actions whatever he does all are obliterated to brahman the reality in this was what he is saying remains the same through the joys and sorrows of this world see the unifying reality everywhere atmau pamyena atmau pamyena through the likeness of the self through the likeness of the self is understandable in two ways one in the absolute level seeing the brahman in one self and in others in other angle it is identifying with all around identifying with everyone atma pamyena at the absolute level it is seeing brahman at the relative level it is identification 
identification means the capacity to be empathetic the capacity to be sympathetic empathy you have this around you have this sympathy you have this empathy those around you opposite of this is very clear focus upon yourself all the time opposite of this is the the focus is upon one's own one's own self so what is the test of the spiritual yogi the first one is identification second samam pashyati samam pashyati means looking at his own actions objectively looking at own self objectively and when you look at yourself objectively obviously you can look at everybody around objectively when you are involved with yourself you can never you you will be involved with everything around you so samam pashyati is a gnani looking objectively at his own actions you can even say at his own decisions at his own choices he is very objective about everything that he he is very objective about all that he does why this objectivity is required the law is the ego nourishes itself with any action you don't need a particular action for the ego to nourish itself any action every action the ego knows how to nourish itself that way objectivity is required if you understand this point you will be very careful what is this the law is the ego can nourish itself with any action every action the the, the ego can nourish itself not only bad actions it can nourish itself with good actions also it can nourish itself with good actions it can nourish itself with bad actions it means what the ego's focus is on nourishment it means the ego's focus is on nourishment nourishment of what one tone self it is called self nourishment so what the ego does the ego nourishes itself while doing bad actions it nourishes itself while doing good actions also it nourishes itself even when it is humble it's very arrogant about its own humility also even even where it is humble it is very arrogant about its humility it will say it will say i am the most humblest person and the most arrogant statement that you can make is i am the most humblest person so from this what do you understand the ego has the capacity to nourish itself through all actions that way objectivity is very important for a yogi the yogi understands the importance of objectivity because of this problem what is the problem supposing if good actions is good and and ego doesn't get nourished we can say it away say keep doing keep doing good actions only bad actions avoid and keep doing good actions and the ego that is born out of good actions sometimes can be more dangerous than the ego that is born out of bad actions the bad ego versus the good ego and the good ego can be more dangerous than the bad ego therefore objectivity a samam pashyati previously he said samam pashyati here he is saying samam pashyati and uh, and uh, and we are trying to draw a distinction between the two the two samam pashyati the second one can be interpreted as this he looks objectively at what we have so much of difficulty in being objective in relation to the others that is our condition now our condition now is we think that it's a great achievement if we are objective to 
others. A spiritual person understands it has got nothing to do with the other. It has got nothing to do with the other. To put it very simply, if the other is the cause of your problem, it's very easy to solve it. If the other is the cause of your problem, it is very easy to solve it. Why it is very easy to solve it? Eliminate the other or you run away. Problem is solved. Are you able to follow? If the other is a problem, if the other is a hindrance, great men would have removed the hindrance for us long back. But the difficulty is what? What is the difficulty? You are the hindrance. You are the hindrance. And impossible to convince you that you are the hindrance. Impossible to convince that you are the hindrance. How, how you are the hindrance? The ego nourishes itself. How you become the hindrance to your own self? Whatsoever you do, the ego nourishes itself. Whatsoever you do, the I stands before everything. I na, not Brahma, na, Vengatachalam. Not the capital I, the small I, the ego. The ego stands before everything. Ego comes and stands erect before everything. Therefore, what is the difficulty here? Objectivity to oneself. Not objectivity in relation to the outside. Please understand, if you are objective in relation to anything outside, you are just being very normal. You are not a yogi. Are you able to follow? You are just being a very normal person. Because objectivity in relation to the external has no meaning. Objectivity in relation to one's own self. That's very important. Only when you are objective, you can look at your own perceptions, emotions and thoughts and see how the ego is nourishing all this and you can eliminate it. If you are not objective to your own self, you can never see the ego nourishing itself. That's why sometime back also we discussed this. So easy to see the fault in another, but impossible to register the fault within oneself. So easy. Why? Because in relation to the other, there is a there is some distance and you can see it. When it comes to your own self, there is no distance between you and your ego. In fact, it is the ego that is trying everything. Even when you prostrate to God, what is prostrating? Doom auntie is saying no only. <laughs> what was I saying? Something I was saying. Find that ego is. Being objective to Ah, correct. Yes, correct. Ego, objectivity is a practice. You learn to see things minus your ego. You learn to see things minus your ego. That's what objectivity is all about. Opposite of objectivity is involvement. And what is involvement? Everything is seen through the eye. Everything is seen through the eye what I like, what I dislike, what I agree, what I disagree. Everything is seen through the eye is lack of objectivity. Objectivity means keeping aside your ego, your likes and dislikes and seeing it. It's a practice. It won't naturally, you need to 
you need to do a lot of practice to develop this it, it will not come it's not natural what is objectivity objectivity is an understanding that the hindrance is you the the hindrance that's that which stops your evolution is you your own self your own self means what the world remains the same your attitude changes one thing is you try to change the world another is you change your attitude world remains the same you change your attitude what is you changing your attitude means sukham va yadi va dukham atma atmopamyena these are all change of attitude world remains the same you change your attitude you become a yogi opposite of that is trying to change the opposite of that is trying to change the world how good it will be if both uh, i do simultaneously i change myself and try and change the world also the yogi understands what it is impossible you can only change you can only change yourself they will follow you can only change yourself what about the others then compassion love what about the others then that's why he says very beautifully atma pamyena meaning you have an identification with with others we have an identification with others so in relation to others it is an identification in relation to you internally it's an attitudinal change this is what the benefit of knowledge is so what do you understand from this the world remains the same and you change your attitude ignorance is the ego is what ego tells you change the change the other okay sir i change myself but 80% i can change but 20% you have to agree that the others are, others also have to change no okay 90% i agree that i will change but you should also say you should also agree that 10% the other also should should change whatever percentage you want the other to change to that extent your ego is nourishing itself the yogi understands Krishna, Krishna is not asking you to become a yogi. He is saying yogi, yogi understands this. He is not saying become a yogi. Yogi understands this. What to whatever extent the expectation is about the change of the external, to that extent the ego is getting nourished. And what is the indication of the nourished ego? Affected by sukham and dukham. Affected by sukha and and dukkha who is the who is the a supreme yogi here is objective and considerate is objective and considerate are able to see who oh, it is two two seemingly opposite disciplines combined objectivity means a kind of detachment considerate sympathy means a kind of involvement so who is a yeah, who is a yogi a yogi is objective and considerate he is considerate as well as objective Are you able to follow? Now, where does consideration come from? This is the beautiful. This is where the knowledge comes in. Where do you become? Where? How do you become considerate? How do you become considerate? Based on this consideration, the concept of dharma is evolved. Based on this emotion, based on this. 
based on this aspect of consideration empathy identification is where the entire concept of dharma is evolved how you want the other to treat you you treat the other in the same way that is dharma how you want the other to treat you treat the other in the same way this is what consideration is all dharma evolved out of this are you able to follow all dharma evolved out of this basic basic notion basic thing sorry no, uh, it's a wrong word to say notion okay it's a wrong word to say notion i use the wrong word it, out of this basic understand out of this basic fact of life evolved all the concepts of dharma if you want the other species not to hurt you you don't hurt the other species you hurt the other species and you and you don't have no right to expect the others to hurt you but sir i am not hurting but the other is hurting it's against the law it's against the law why if you are not hurting you cannot get hurt because you getting hurt is the choice that you have made to get hurt world cannot hurt you 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 allow the world to hurt you are you able to follow the world cannot hurt you you allow the world to hurt you this is a this is a supreme yogi he is considered a supreme yogi see why such a big uh, why such a big preamble introduction and all we are giving seemingly unconnected to the verse is next verse is going to be so beautiful verse this preamble will be so useful to understand what is the next verse because in the next verse <clears throat> arjuna is going to demolish all that krishna has told till now he is going to demolish that he going to do that next to us that why such a uh, are able to follow the considerate means what affectionate sympathetic out of this idea of sympathy compassion arus dharma again i am repeating and what is dharma what is the basis of dharma not right wrong good bad from from what law everything evolved what the what you expect the others should not do to you hmm? what you do not want the others to do to you what you don't expect the others to do to you what you should do you don't do that you don't do that it's as simple as that yogi this is what is called sympathy this is what is called because he understands the pain in that so what he does he is very objective he is very alert that alertness is very sympathetic in that alertness there is a compassion are you able to follow that alertness there is a there is a sympathy there is a compassion there is an affection at the same time objectivity also so who is a supreme yogi objectively considerate are you able to follow is considerate affectionate at the same time he is objective affectionate and detached at the same time that's what it means he is loving and detached are you able to follow he is loving and detached at the same time our problem is either i will love or i will get detached i cannot do both together ha huh? vedantic knowledge a spiritual practitioner one who is evolved can do this one who is evolved can can do this comes through practice comes through training doesn't come naturally it's not natural if it is natural why do we need all this uh, lectures and all that we will be living it already you know the fact that we are not living it means we are able to appreciate there is this possibility like that in the first place are able at least we are able to appreciate that there is a possibility like this and we are able to appreciate that 
how good life would be if a person were to live like like this to that extent we are better but again we cannot stop here we need to put more we need to bring into this practice what is the practice what i don't want the others to do to me i will not do to the other are you able to follow where does it start from the other or from you or is it mutual ignorance is from the other modal avanga ponnata sir apram i will see the ignorant from the other clear half knowledge will say mutual sir nanu konja vara avanglu clear win win situation illaya i also give something he also gives something win rendu peru panna dhan sir correct ah irukum a yogi in the vision of krishna yogi in the vision of vedanta has a completely different understanding what is it karma starts from dharma starts from you and when you are dharmic the world will return the courtesy it's a law the world will return the the courtesy you when when you are the when you are dharmic the world returns the courtesy therefore what happens is peaceful is calm unaffected such a person is called a supreme yogi this is from one angle yogi from another angle yogi means from another angle yogi is one who has understood as yogi is one who has understood what the world doesn't need correction it's my i need correction Are you able to follow? When I say I need correction, what is that I need correction? The way in which I see the world needs correction. What is the way in which I see the world with the proper attitude? I have to see the world that needs correction. So if I bring in the right attitude to see the world, Arjuna, he is considered a supreme. Are you able to follow? He is considered a supreme yogi. Test of unfoldment. This is so. From this, what do you understand? Any time you are disturbed, affected, irritated, upset, what do you understand from this? Either your ego is nourishing itself. the ego is nourishing itself your attitude needs your attitude needs to be changed corrected third sympathy identification affection has to be has to be more you understand all this are able to follow so a yogi uses the mental affectation as a tool to identify his as a tool for self correction what is the tool that he uses for self correction his own mental affectations his own mental agitations one sown mental agitations one uses for one's correction because mental agitation arises when when you see it with the wrong when you see it with the wrong attitude ego nourishing itself you got to be more you got to be more sympathetic for the idea of to be more sympathetic we discuss this no happy and blessed are when wickedness stands forth revealed as goodness bereft of a guide happy and blessed are you have reached a happy state you have reached a blessed state when wickedness stands forth revealed you see a wickedness but how do you see that wickedness when wickedness stands forth revealed as goodness bereft of 
a guide. You become affectionate, you become sympathetic. Are you able to follow? It's lack of guidance, this person. You see a person in proper language. What do you understand? He is not trained in is not trained in proper language, correct? So you will not get angry at that person for using improper language. You understand that person is not yet trained in proper language. The moment he is trained in proper language, he will not be in this manner. So that is how the sympathy. Ego nourishing itself through all actions. That you are that that you have to be very alert. That you have to be very alert to see how ego nourishes itself through all actions, maybe good actions or bad actions. And I say good and bad in a very loose sense. Whatsoever you can call as good, whatsoever you can call as bad, but the ego knows how to nourish itself. And Katopanishad starts with this introduction. How ego nourishes itself through all actions is how Katopanishad starts. Because Nachiketa's father does an yajna called Vishwajit Yajna. Vishwa means, Vishwa means world, universe. Jit means conquering. So he wants to, he is doing a prayer to conquer the, the world. Will any sane person do that? But he was doing an action. And Nachiketa saw that and went and told his father, it doesn't work. It doesn't work like that. And fathers will not like to hear from the children, no? Isn't it? No father will like to hear from the children. And Nachiketa's father told Nachiketa to Yama I to Yama I give you, he said. To Yama I give you. So, what is that? The ego knows how to nourish itself through all actions. Even when it prostrates to God, the body is prostrating, but the ego is standing. Erect. The body is prostrating, but the ego, the ego is standing. Erect. The ego is not bending. Who is the supreme yogi? The ego is bent. The ego is bent. Objectivity. This is called objectivity. Awareness of how your ego is nourished through your actions. You are objective to that. So, who is a yogi now? Who is a supreme yogi? Who is an evolved person? Objectively affectionate. Affectionately objective. You can say whatever you, you, know, you can say. That. Affectionately objective or objectively affectionate. Such a person is considered, mataha, considered as a supreme yogi. Considered by whom? This person is considered a wise person. Immediately what you should ask? Considered by? By whom? Krishna is saying, considered by me. I consider such a person as a supreme yogi. In pleasure and pain, he is objective. Objective to oneself and considerate to others. Are you able to see now? With reference to others, he is considerate. With reference to oneself, it is objectivity. So, so when you see the pain in the other, you want to, there is an affection. There is a sympathy. There is an identification. Are, are you able to follow? Opposite of that is affectionate upon oneself and objective to the other. That is called selfishness. Are you able to follow? 
objective to the other means doesn't matter what happens to the other i don't care about what happens to the other all that i'm interested is in my own my own happiness my own welfare this is called selfishness what is spiritual growth what is spiritual growth what he calls as spiritual growth spiritual growth is you are considerate in relation to the pain of others and you are objective to your own self such a yogi is called parama yogi parama yogi he is not even calling it ordinary yogi he is giving an adjective he is called paramo yogi parama yogi parama yogi means parama means supreme clear yeah. parama means supreme so this person is called a supreme this person is called a supreme yogi who a person who can identify objective has the knowledge and understanding that alert to the fact that ego should not be nourished at at any cost at any situation the ego should not be nourished and what is the starting point of all this the starting point of all this is an understanding what world doesn't need correction it is my vision that needs correction world doesn't need correction it's my vision that needs correction vedanta doesn't try to correct the world vedanta changes your attitude that's why it is impossible to popularize vedanta why all are try pannal sir yeah Instagram lo polna, Facebook lo polna. Inka nevo kordungo. Instagram lo lam poramu. Yeah, mo Instagram lo lam reponu mo. Teri la dinu. Yar thala who 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 doesn't have Instagram account? Open an Instagram account na ba. Open an account na ba. Huh? it cannot become popular at all why because it says world doesn't need correction you need you need correction correction in what changing your changing your attitude changing your the change of attitude so a person who has done this is a supreme yogi this is verse number 32 yes i didn't understand what is being objective to oneself how should you be objective to yourself that's the first question how does one be objective to oneself to become objective to oneself repeatedly you need to understand repeatedly you have to tell yourself this what the ego nourishes the constant attempt of the ego is to nourish itself even when it wants to even when the ego wants to practice renunciation through practicing renunciation also it wants to acquire something such a tricky thing this ego is <clears throat> even when it is practicing renunciation it wants to acquire something what does it want to acquire nobody has renounced the way in which i have renounced are you able to follow nobody has practiced renunciation in the way that i have i am practicing so what is objectivity objectivity is an alertness what is that alertness how ego does nourish itself through all actions repeatedly this is why manana is very much important first you have to understand this fact 
A yogi is one who has understood all this and come to the highest stage. What is the starting point of practice and objectivity and understanding? What is understanding? Ego can nourish, ego nourishes itself through all actions. Are you able to understand that? When the ego is nourished, what is the consequences of the nourished ego? Nala stronger, alerta, alive, nala greener, the ego nudaya. Consequences in that. Agitations, depression, worry, anxiety, these are all the indications. Are you able to follow? These are all the indications of the ego being alive, nourished. So, whenever you experience these indications, what are the indications? Worry, anxiety, irritation. Add the six symptoms. We know those six symptoms. What are the six symptoms? Rodha, Loba, Madha, Matsarya, Bhaya, Dvesha. When you have these six, six symptoms, you can understand and a symptomatic treatment on the first. Yeah, you can deal with only the symptoms first. And then someday in future we can get to the core. But initially you can deal only with the symptoms. What are the symptoms? Rodha, Loba, Madha, Matsarya, Bhaya, Dvesha is one system or sorry, one symptom. The other is uh, the, the, the other is a further consequence of it. What is the further consequence of it? Worry, anxiety, depression, frustration, etc. Hmm? Why all this happens? Because ego is a fight against the reality. Ego is a fight against the reality. What is the reality? Egolessness is the reality. Ego is nothing but a fight against the reality and a fight that it can never win. It's a losing battle. Yogi understands that and he stops the fight. Are you able to follow? Yogi understands this and he stops the fight. What is the fight? Ego is nothing but a, a hopeless where sure it, for sure it is going to get defeated. What is it? What is the fight? It wants to believe that it is slightly better than the rest. That's what ego is. Are you able to follow? Clear the ego and uh, what is ego? I'm not going into the dictionary meaning nor a very scholarly definition. Of love. Yeah, what is ego? A conviction that you are slightly better than yes. everything around you. You are slightly better. Rumba line, sir. I'm not, I'm not such an egoistic person to say that uh, I'm no, no. But what you should realize is, what you should also accept, sir, is I am slightly better. Are you able to follow? And what is that slight better? Adhantri Vikrama. What is that slight better? That's what Trivikrama means Vamanavatar. Trivikrama means Vamanavatar. Are you able to follow? That's slight better. See, I understand, sir. Uh, I understand that uh, everybody in the family is contributing. Every I understand all that. But what you should agree, sir, is my contribution is slightly better than the others. Are you able to follow? What is ego? Are you okay till now? Technically, I am supreme, I alone exist. What is ego? I am, I am supreme, I alone exist, I am the doer. This is ego. I am the doer. When I say I am the doer, worry and anxiety comes. What is the worry and anxiety? The result must happen in the way that I want. All that comes. Karma Yoga takes care of it. I am supreme. What is I am supreme? Slightly better. Nobody say I am supreme in the, nobody talks about like Hiranyakashipu. Hiranyakashipu is the extreme, extremity of this I am supreme because he told everybody 
he erected his own statues everywhere no he he erected his own statues everywhere and told everybody that yeah you erect your own statue you frame your own photograph no you are hiranyakashipu nartho i'm not saying that purana stories are saying that you put your own wedding photograph also na hiranyakashipu nartho why others must put it why you put your own photo are you able to follow yeah but then but then but then you like to see your own reflection everywhere no you like to see your own photographs everywhere you like to see your own reflections everywhere in the mirror house is the most enjoyable house isn't it why mirror house is the most enjoyable house because you can see yourself you can see yourself only everywhere ah, what the able to follow this is called i am free i alone exist and this is a fight against ego is a constant struggle ego is nothing but a futile constant struggle yogi understands this give up gives up this effort are you able to follow why it is a futile struggle why it is a futile struggle it is futile because it doesn't take you it doesn't take you anywhere positive it doesn't take you anywhere positive ultimately it will lead to the ultimate result of ego is destruction so what is objectivity i am answering objectivity what is objectivity objectivity is an understanding how you destroy yourself when you are alert to that you are destroying yourself sorry when you understand that you are destroying yourself you will be alert not to do that are you able to follow you will be alert as to not to do that so how does one practice objectivity you cannot practice objectivity first you have to develop a conviction in this verse we are talking about the parama yogi so parama yogi has done all that so we start at a very high level in this verse but if if a person in the initial stages of a spiritual path he cannot start practicing objectivity first he needs to develop a conviction that person needs to develop a conviction first what is a conviction and this conviction leads to the practice of objectivity what is a conviction that one needs to develop world doesn't need correction who needs correction i constant correction because the ego gains a back door entry why constant correction because the ego gains a back door entry what is a back door entry it knows how to nourish itself through any action people in the world are all so materialistic sir they are not interested in their self development at all we are all interested in our self development we can become very our ego can get nourished about the very fact of i wanting to grow the the ego can nourish itself through that action also therefore how do you how do you become alert to it are you follow so in the initial stages we don't worry about practice the initial stages we worry about develop a conviction that's why manana is suggested in this in the context of this verse we are talking about parama yogi who is a parama yogi one who has attained that supreme state in order to glorify what is that supreme state in order to explain what that supreme state is a certain things are told are able to follow not for you to start practicing any of it for you what you have to practice for you what you have to practice very clear shravana manana karma bhakti two pedals don't miss that don't miss that part don't miss that angle all this is told so that your shravana manana karma bhakti can be more motivated adukada ivula la solradhu idhu are able to follow all this is told for what so that your shravana manana karma bhakti can be 
can be more motivated, can be more inspired. Are you able to follow? Therefore, to answer the question, how does one practice objectivity? Once you are convinced that you make yourself, you mar yourself. Once you are convinced about the fact, in every discourse, he repeats it at least 10 times. You make yourself or you or you mark yourself. When you say when you when you say you make yourself or you mark yourself, when you when you when you are deeply ingrained in this conviction, then objectivity becomes powerful. In the context of Parma Yogi, we don't discuss all this. Why? Because he has done, he has done all these and reached a very high level of growth. He has reached all, he has transcended all this and reached a very high level of growth. So to put it simply, in all trying situations, in all situations, who is a Parma Yogi, a Jnani, he is objective. He is objective. Identifying himself with others around. When you are objectively considerate or considerate, huh? I don't know, what is the other thing? Whatever the other things, Lingle fill in the blanks, Lingle potum water. You become a Parama Yogi. Such a Yogi becomes a Jeevan Mukta. Such a Yogi becomes a Jeevan, Jeevan Mukta. Jeevan Mukta means one, one who is liberated now, one who has attained the liberation now. In Atma Bodha, there is a beautiful example. Worldly knowledges are like moonlight. Vedantic knowledge is like sunlight, he says. And the moonlight becomes insignificant in front of the sunlight. Definitely moonlight also, definitely in moonlight also you see something. But you don't get the clarity in the way that you see it through Sunlight. One. Second. Worldly knowledge is like moonlight. Enna adagata shukla paksha krishna paksha laund. Clear. Waxing and waning happens in moonlight. In sunlight. Are you able to follow? The paksha, paksha means waxing and, and waning. The moon, the moon increases, the moon decreases. No. The sunlight doesn't. In the sunlight, there is no such thing. That's the knowledge. That's the that's a beautiful example. He that's a beautiful example he he brings in Atma Bodha to distinguish. It. That's also knowledge. We are not we are not saying it's not knowledge. It's also knowledge. But it is it is like the moonlight. And this knowledge is like the sunlight. Are you able to follow? What is that? Liberation, Jeevan, Mukta. Jeevan Mukta means liberated now. Liberation not postponed for something, not postponed for future. Liberation not going to happen sometime later. Something that's going to happen. Something that will happen now. For a Parama Yogi, it has happened. For us, we are saying it's going to happen. It will happen now. That's what we are saying from the standpoint of a person who's doing the sadhana. From the standpoint of the Parma Yogi, from the standpoint of actually what Krishna is saying in this verse, it has already happened. It has already happened means he is talking about a Jeevan. He is talking about a Jeevan Mukta. Talking about a Jeevan. Jeevan.
Now our dear friend Arjuna is going to enter. Next verse, please. Arjuna Uvacha Yoyam Yogas Vahya Prokaha Samyena Madhusudana Yetasyaham Napashyami Chanchalatvasti Timstiram Arjuna Uvacha Yoyam Yogas Vahya Prokaha Sam Yena Madhusu Dana Yetasya Ham Napasya Bi Chanchalat was the Timstiram Arjuna said, This yoga of equanimity taught by you, O Madhusudana, I do not see its enduring stability. Going to restlessness. This yoga of equanimity taught by you, O Madhusudana, I do not see its enduring stability owing to restlessness. What is he saying? Take an Allah to the practice Lala, it will not work out, he said. Are you able to follow what he is saying? Beautiful. Arjuna is saying, all that you told till now, Krishna, is very, is very nice to hear. It's wonderful to give it. A, it is wonderful when you are in the position of giving a discourse. It is wonderful to talk when you are in the position of giving a discourse, but impossible to do when you are impossible to do when you are in the position where you have to practice it. This is the liberality of this knowledge. This is the liberality of this knowledge. After listening to all this, what all he has listened till now? He has listened to chap chapter 2, Sankhya Yoga. He has listened to Stita Prajna. He has listened to Karma Yoga. He has listened to Yajna Karma. Hmm? He has listened to Yajna Karma and he has listened to Yogi, Sanyasi, Jnani. And then he has listened Anashritak Karma Palam Karyam Karma Karutya Sa Sanyasi Cha Yogi Cha Nani Ragnir Na Chakriya He has heard all that. After hearing all this, Arjuna is saying, what is he saying? This yoga of equanimity this yoga of equanimity taught yoga of equanimity refers to all that he has been teaching from the beginning all that he has been teaching from the beginning is what is referred to the yoga of equanimity so he is asking this yoga of equanimity taught by you O Madhusudana Madhu Sudhana is the slayer of Madhu, the Rakshasa. I see not. I see not means Aham Napashyami. Aham Napashyami. Aham Napashya means I am not able to see how it can be achieved. Why? Why he says I feel that it cannot be achieved. Why he feels it cannot be achieved? Owing to restlessness. Vikrepa, the preoccupation of the mind, Krishna. The preoccupation of the mind. Connected to the preamble that we have been discussing till now. The ego is so strong. The ego is so strong. The ignorance is so, the ignorance is so strong, the conviction is so strong. What? It is the world that needs, it is the world that needs change, it is the world that needs correction. It is the world that, it, it's so, so when he's saying something exactly the opposite, Arjuna is confused. 
what is the confusion on the one hand you said astira chanchala already he said it previously krishna only said it is astira and and chanchala and now he is saying how can this astira chanchala can be controlled one second he is the same shastra that equates it to fire insatiable as fire how can that be quenched satiety is impossible for the for the mind it has been told already how is it possible krishna how is it possible the samatva darshanam revelalu the samatva darshanam vision of sameness all this i don't think it can happen at all that's what he is you are glorifying the samatvam samam pasyati sarvatra he says atmanye atmana tush all whatever be it all that he has said already and now he is saying this pickle distracted preoccupied mind this pickle distracted preoccupied mind how the swikal preoccupied distracted mind can be made to focus on anything forget about meditation is not even we, we, we have not even come to the level of meditation how can this pickle distracted preoccupied mind be made to do this and krishna must be smiling at this question of krishna must be smiling at this question of arjuna why he will be smiling because he can say something more deeper he can say something more every question makes it more and more deeper four characteristics of mind the person who has known these four characteristics of the mind asks this question what are the four characteristics of the mind chanchalam pramati balavat dridam four characteristics of mind Arjuna is carefully following what Krishna is saying. One or quality of the mind. Every time he listens to one one quality, the impossibility is becoming evident. For us, it looks so possible. For us, it looks so simple, straightforward. Because for us, it looks very easy. For us, it looks very easy. For us, it looks very simple, very straightforward. Why? because he is we are not following the four characteristics and what are the four characteristics of the mind first thing is chanchalam chanchalam means fickle changing all the time unsteady that's why we say mind is movement changing emotions motion comes from the root motion which keeps changing therefore any decisions you make out of emotion you are bound to change later doesn't matter whatsoever you make doesn't matter all decisions made out of emotions are bound to change why because when you, when emotions change the decisions also will change are you able to follow why because it is the first characteristic of the mind is chanchalam fickle second characteristic of the mind is pramati turbulent turbulent means churns 
balabat wrong not available for control yes pampered so much so much that any any attempt to control becomes the a failure why because it has been pampered so much so much balavat the fourth one is dridam attachment holds to objects and beings firmly attachment if you know these are the characteristics of the mind you will understand what arjuna's question is such a beautiful question that he had asked they will follow the four characteristics what are the four characteristics chanchalam mati balavat dridam when you yourself has said these are the characteristics of the mind and you are asking and you are glorifying the person who has transcended all that and all that you are saying is impractical also so why are you giving me a discourse about that which cannot be practiced that's what he is asking are you able to follow talk something that can be practiced krishna all along you are talking about something that cannot be practiced why because maybe arjuna must have attempted sometime in the past all this now he is he is saying no how can such a mind ever attain stability due to the definition of the mind come i told you when we when we got into this portion that all the concepts all the understanding of human mind comes from this particular portion and it is a complete portion a complete understanding of what the human mind is if the question is extraordinary the answer is going to be the answer is much more extraordinary is that but the answer we are not getting into today we are only discussing the the question and we will continue the with the question next week also because i'm just i uh, i only gave the definitions and these 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 aspects of the mind has to be understood in these aspects of the mind has to be understood in in detail if you do not understand this mind you will never know what you are doing you can never practice anything because you do not know what you are you have no clue to what you are trying to handle remember to follow you have no clue to what you are handling and you will never know the effort required for that and you will never know the amount of effort required for that hmm? fickle first thing fickle means changing all the time emotions you would have observed all decisions are based on emotions more emotional you get more you will say i know what i am doing are able to follow that's why anybody comes and says i know what i am doing i don't laugh but i feel like laughing why because two years later they are going to do exactly the opposite and say i know what i am doing say are how can you say that two years back you said exactly the same thing now you no 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 mind conveniently forgets that that's why decision making is such a critical factor in life remember follow decision making is such a critical factor in life because it should not be based on emotions and all decisions if not all most of the decisions we do is based on is based on emotions and and any decision that you take based on emotion you you will necessarily what you will do there cannot be a continuity there cannot be a consistency you are bound to 
to change. You are bound to change. Why? Because chanchalam, fickle. Private right, follow? Fickle. Two years back, it was holding on to something. Ten years back, it was holding on to something else. Now it is holding on to something. Five years later, it will hold on to something else. But the fickle mind will not agree to this. The fickle mind will not accept this. The fickle mind will say, what does the fickle mind say? I know what I am doing. Second quality of the mind, pramati, turbulent. See, when it is turbulent, it affects the senses, it affects the body. That's why you go to doctor, they will say you are stressed. Any disease, they will say you are stressed. Why? When it is pramati, turbulent, it affects the, not only it affects itself, it, it affects the, the body, the senses. Because it's constantly churning, no? Pramati. Balabat. Balabat means strong. Not available for control. The last thing is dridam. It holds on to objects firmly. It holds on to objects firmly. We'll continue the discussion. We are not concluding. We'll continue with the same verse next week. The verse 33. In fact, two verses, 33 and 34. In fact, two verses, 32, uh, sorry, 33 and, and 34. When he asks these questions, and then comes Krishna's answer. Again, the fickle-minded nature of Arjuna becomes visible. In 39, he will ask, okay, Krishna, if I die halfway through, what will happen? Okay, I am trying to do all this, I am practicing all this, okay, I am I'm willing to put in the effort. Yeah. Yeah. Trusting you, trusting you, I am getting into this, I am plunging into this. What will happen if I die? Because there is no guarantee that I that will be alive till I become a Jeevan Mukta. What will happen if I die halfway through? What will happen if I die halfway through? Another beautiful answer. Another beautiful answer. So, Arjuna's question. What does Arjuna's question? Tamam Pashyati Sarvatra. This Sankhya. Start from chapter 2. To understand this question of Arjuna, you need to refer from, from chapter 2. Verse 11, chapter 2 length, you have to understand. Where he spoke about Sankhya Yoga, Nasako Vidyate Bhavaha, Nabhavo Vidyate Sataha, he spoke about Sankhya Yoga. And then, Karmanye Vadigara Se Mahapuleshu Kadachana, and then the Sita Pragya, and then the Karma Yoga in chapter 3, and then 12 Yajnas in chapter 4, and then the glory of what sannyas is, etc. in chapter 5, yogi, sannyasi, jnani, the grades. And then in chapter 6, atvita karma palam, karyam karma karoti ha, sa sannyasi cha yogi cha, nani ragnir na chakriya ha, that. And then he spoke about meditation. Actually, he never spoke anything about meditation at all. He only said, uh, uh, find a comfortable seat, don't fall off to sleep. That's all he said about meditation. Nothing else, nothing else he said anything. Nothing else he spoke about meditation. You will see the blue color, you will see the white color. You will, uh, you will, uh, nothing like that he spoke. Yeah. He, he, he only said, uh, don't sit in a very high seat. Why? <laughs> Why don't sit in a very high seat? If you have meditated, you will understand all this. See. See. Meditation is absolute state of relaxation. When the muscles are absolutely relaxed, you will fall off. Imagine when you are meditating from a three feet height. What will happen if you fall off? Yeah. After three weeks, you will not even sit. Therefore, he said, not too high, not too low. You know why he said all that? Because all has a meaning. Huh? All, has a, all has a meaning. Uh, other than that, he never spoke anything about 
meditation and again he went on to samam pashyati sarvatra etc 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 and krishna would have taken a break actually he didn't take a break arjuna asked this question what is the question from the angle of the preacher it is easy krishna solra the romba easy but i don't see its enduring stability what is enduring stability the stability of your knowledge that you have given me arjuna sorry krishna i don't see it being stable at all the knowledge that you have given me i don't see it being stable because it is just it is just wavering moving therefore what is he what is he concluding practically adha solunga say something that can be say something that can be practiced if you listen to krishna's answer you will get more angry with krishna va as you study more and more bhagavad gita you will become very affectionate and sympathetic to to arjuna and extremely anger and extreme anger and frustration with with krishna one kuda practical you don't not even one practical thing you give this is verse number 33 and we continue with verse number 33 onwards in the next questions by venkata chalam then mala ego in vedanta yeah venkata chalam ego in vedanta is a far wider concept relative to common worldly understanding most of an individual thought flow may be ego related venkata chalam all so my... thought flow is ego related oh okay that's whatever not anything all thought is ego related because it all starts with the i first you know so all individual all thought flow is ego related only not only most except the aham brahmasmi except that aham brahmasmi rest are on ego related only the difference clear yeah. the degree varies that's it the degree varies but it's all ego only degree na not a not a big difference alla like degree means again it's not a big difference in degree little bit here and there that's all good ego is a slightly better ego than a bad ego all that just a, it's a very slight difference not a big ma it's not a major difference alla therefore ego in vedanta is entirely different in the way that the word ego is used ah oh. in fact in the worldly sense they say ego is a must in the worldly sense they will say ego is a must for without ego you cannot egolessness is not an achievement as far as the worldly worldly transactions are concerned egolessness is an absolute necessity for self transformation are you able to see the difference that's why that's why it's two different knowledges you can't combine the both as far as the world is concerned egolessness is not a virtue as far as the worldly knowledges are concerned you have to be firm you have to speak your voice you have to establish yourself you need to stand over the other you need to i don't know what all it is so all worldly things arises from the ego self development worldly actions nourishes the ego vedanta dilutes the ego how can they be the you can't nourish and dilute at the same time are you able to follow you can't nourish it and dilute it at that's why it's not at all working because morning 5 to 6 we dilute it and then the whole day and then the whole day we nourish it again next day we sit and clear yeah, again next day we sit and we try to die. so after a period of time we will be like krishna talk like arjuna talk it is two different two different entities all together as far as the worldly things are concerned they say self respect 
self pride yeah some some self respect is needed no sir some self self it doesn't matter whatever word you can use all that means is ego are you okay in touch One more by Nankatachal. He hmm. has posted. He has posted. Okay. Does ego serve any positive purpose at all? No. In the worldly sense, yes. In the spiritual sense, no. In the worldly sense, yes. It does serve some purpose. What is the purpose? You feel like you have achieved something. You feel like ego means number one. What is ego? What is ego? Number one. That's what ego, no? Ego equals becoming number one. So, if you want to become number one, ego. But the reality of life is there is no such thing as number one. Why? Because there is no such thing. No, how does that? Why in the certificate? There is no such thing as number. Number one. Okay, you become the richest person. Number one. What happens? Yeah. Very soon somebody is going to become number one. No. Hmm? There were so many number ones in the past. What happened to all of them? What What happened to the current number one? Yeah. Okay. One version Forbes magazine front page la cover page la photo varam alla da. Adi mele nothing much happens. Forbes magazine, correct? I'm not telling you. Forbes magazine, then your 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 photograph will come in the front page of the Forbes magazine. So, what is ego? Ego means becoming number number one. In order to become number one, you have to stand. You have to stamp over the other. All are. Same the number one agala. Ah, that is not possible. Let let everybody become number one. Then number one becomes so. Then number one itself becomes meaningless. Are you able to follow? Make it actual. Ego na. What is ego? At least wheat le ya. Sonne peche kya kono sir? Yaar abadhan le. At least one percent sir. At least the dog in my house. At least the mosquito in my house. Somebody, at least one person, at the ego. From one, it will go to two. From two, it will go to yeah. There are three, you no, know, arithmetic proportion, geometric proportion, and what is the third one? There is the third one also. Huh? Arithmetic proportion, geometric proportion, and then what is the third one? Ego is that. Ego is the third proportion. अगर टाइप करने में आराम दे, ये एक्सपोनेंशियल करेक्ट, रागो ही करेक्ट, एक्सपोनेंशियल तो करेक्ट आह दे, अरिथमेटिक प्रोग्रेशन, ज्योमेट्रिक प्रोग्रेशन एंड देन देर इस अगर एक्सपोनेंशियल ना अगर ये पूरी आउंड रहते हो सीक्वेंस ऐ करेगा तो इट विल जस्ट बिकम एक्सेक्टली लाइक ओके कोरोना वायरस इस एक्सपोनेंशि� Geometrical arithmetic progression, geometric progression, you can predict. Exponential, you cannot. But you know that it is growing. How does that? Ego is like that. First, it will ask for one person and it will not be satisfied with that one. It will want to go to two. From two, it will want to go to 40. From 40, it will want to go to 4,000. I don't know. It keeps. Is it okay, Venkata Chalum? Did they answer you? Ego is number one. Ego means pay attention to me all the time. Adha ego. What is ego? What is ego? Huh? Begging and doing sashtang namaskar to everybody. Pay attention to me. Pay attention to me. Pay attention to me. And more you go and beg and ask people pay attention to me. Pay attention to me. What happens? Ego constantly is neglected ego is rejected because it begs for attention 
what is ego begging for begging for attention and all the ego is uh, elsewhere is going to say ego is a beggar adle na positive beggar na ego nale beggar is there a, is there any positive beggar 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 all of them illa three piece suit nu podna positive beggar uh, uh, torn clothes na negative beggar abbi vena vechikalam are you able to follow vengita chalam ego means wanting to become number one ego means constantly begging begging for what pay pay attention pay attention pay attention and if you don't pay attention i will commit suicide ah correct in the age lalla apdiya clear so 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 without removing or without annihilating the ego yes. we can never realize our true nature impossible correct impossible that stands in the way yes it's the ego that stands it's the ego so what is ego put it very simply number 1 begging for attention begging for attention pleading begging is okay when touch him yeah mala venkatesan but krishna could have said krishna could have said so many things yeah i don't know what all we want him to say but krishna could have said many things he could have said the detailed procedure of meditation etc in an addendum and asked us to refer in gita itself krishna no master worth the name who is interested in a revolution will talk about meditation any master who is interested in your welfare will not talk about meditation full stop krishna will not talk about meditation upanishads will not talk about meditation nobody who has an ounce of affection for you will not talk about meditation full stop therefore krishna doesn't talk about meditation are you okay ma why is that affection because you do not know how why, why is that you you do not know what you are doing when you are sitting and doing meditating you do not know how you are hurting yourself why will they give a practice to hurt yourself nobody needs to be taught to meditate when you reach that level you will become meditative there is no need to be there is no need to tell a person what is meditation what he should see what he should not see all that is not meditation he in the current day context it is impossible to agree to what uh, what krishna is saying in the current day context it is impossible for every any one of us to agree to what krishna is saying or even what swami ji is saying why because we are all so convinced about meditation sir in the class mudikum bodu kuda konja neram meditate pannalama sir you know No, we are all so you know. You take us to one height class, and then if we sit in meditation, Abhi a Brahman we will catch. Eh? People asked me, can we do this in this class? I said, Madhulan, I meditate. Pana try pan ra. Then I will come and teach. When I myself can't meditate, what meditation I am going to teach you? Are you able to follow? The principle is this, Mala. Any master who has a ounce of genuine affection in your welfare. will not talk about meditation 701 verses not a word he spoke about meditation you take upanishads not a single word about meditation you take brahma sutras not a single word about meditation you take the you take the bhakti shastras you take the bhakti cult not a word about meditation but then we are all very convinced about what america does correct what america does is the standard not krishna not upanishad not brahma sutra not vedanta so when america meditates that becomes a standard for the whole world to therefore krishna will not talk about meditation no master for that matter will talk about meditation in fact they will stop you from practicing meditation they will this is they will they will tell you do not 
they will tell you do not meditate. Why? Because adhikaritvam is needed. Adhikaritvam, you have to be a qualified person to meditate. You don't give practices to those who are not qualified. Therefore, Krishna, not only Krishna, you can, you can refer the Upanishads, you can refer the Gita, you can refer the Brahma Sutras, you can refer the any Shastras, nowhere they will talk about meditation. As a practice, in the way that, in the way that people are talking about it now, it will not be practiced. It will not be discussed at all. Is it okay, Ma? Mala? Yeah. Harmonic progression. They are the Shalam. <laughs> Shalam. BNS Shalam. Harmonic progression. I don't know what is that harmonic progression. Maths level is not sir. Ah, correct. Yeah. Harmonic progression. Maybe. I don't know. Maybe in the modern day context they are saying something, but uh, I don't know. I have, I, younger uh, Max teacher, I have more than told you that. Arithmetic, geometry, exponential. Oh. Harmonic progression, I don't know. I can give some meaning. I can, I can, I can, I can give some meaning. I know. But then in the context of it doesn't. With this, we conclude for today and we continue with the discussion of verse 33 onwards. Continue with verse 33.